So in this demonstration we're going to show you how to work with the selection event on a table when you have a multi-selection of multiple rows. We have a table on the page, it has the selection set to multiple. The data in this case is coming from a service data provider and we have a selection event defined. In the selection event you'll see that the only thing we're doing right now is calling a module function, this is the function and we're passing in a parameter. The parameter that we're passing is a selection which is what the select um, operation or action actually gets as an input parameter. It's an array of the selected rows but it's uh, in a strange format so we're going to show you how to work with this. So we're passing this as an input parameter to this function. Let's look at the function. The function gets this array and then it's going to tell us how many rows are inside this array. This is what this row is doing. And then it's going to loop over those rows and for each row it's going to print for us something called the start key, which is this start key dot row object, and the start index, the end key, and the end index. So that's all it's doing. Let's run this application and see the results. We're going to open the developer tools here. So we'll be able to look at the console, clean it, and let's select this row for example. And you can see the results from our function over here. We got one row selected, okay? And the row has a start key of two and end key of two. The key is basically the ID, which is marked as the ID field of the table. The piece of information that is more interesting actually is the index. The index, which in this case is 1, tells us which row in the table was selected. Uh, this is 1 because we start from 0 in the array. If we now select, for example, with a shift those three rows, we can see that now we still have one row in the selection. It starts from 2 and ends with 6, which is correct, 2, 5, and 6, but as you can see, the numbers here don't really mean a a lot because the ID m might not be sequential. Therefore you probably want to work with the index which tells you we selected rows 1 to 3, basically 2 to 4 if you start from 0. Now multiple selection also means that you can select a skip row, so for example select this row. Now you get two records in the selection array. Okay? The first one tells you that we selected rows 1 to 3 and the second one tells you we selected 6 to 6. And if we shift select again this row, okay, now we actually selected everything over here, so we're back to one row of selection, starting from one, ending at seven. So this is the basics of how you can know which rows were selected in the table. Now it's up to you to pick up those indexes, go over the rows, and figure out what to do with them.